thank you so much for watching. My name is Savannah and we are back in Planet Zoo again building with the wonderful Australian pieces. And I know I know I'm a little bit slow to the party I guess. Um, the Australian DLC launched a while ago and there's some people, <laughs> Palsley, cough, Palsley that's completely done with an entire zoo already because he just hammered it out in 14 days and I don't know how he does it. But I'm a little bit slower. I don't have that kind of time or um, ambition really, I guess. Uh, so this is only the second build that we have uh, made with the Australian pieces, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. And I said in the koala habitat, which was the first one that we built, that I wasn't really planning on making this a whole zoo. I wasn't really making it a project. I, I lied, or I changed my mind, rather. I have decided to make it a whole project. I got such wonderful feedback on the koala habitat and the style, and everybody just kind of loved the aesthetic of it, and, and the Australian pack has been very popular, at least from what I can tell and the things that I've seen, and I certainly am enjoying all the pieces, that I decided to keep going with it. So this is the second enclosure in what will be a little zoo, and I am gonna let you know it's, it's gonna be a, a little zoo, not like a river rock zoo, but just a few little habitats here and there. Um, so today I decided that the second animal I wanted to add would be the kangaroo, but I actually added uh, a friend for them, I guess. So in safaris, I've seen um, kangaroos out in big open enclosures uh, where, you know, jeeps drive through. Normally they're out with um, emus or other animals. We don't have emus, so I threw ostriches in there. Um, we can just pretend that they're emus or we can think that they're ostriches and they're kind of the same, so they're gonna get along. As far as the game's concerned, they get along, and they do have similar enough needs that they're able to live in the same habitat with the same foliage, and still have the uh, high welfare that's needed to play the game, even if you're not playing in sandbox. Again, if you're new to the channel, all my builds I do try to build with the animal's needs in mind as far as the game's concerned. I bring my own level of realism to it um, as far as what I think the animals would want in real life, but I do try to incorporate those into what the game requires um, because I do think it's a little bit of a challenge. Whether it's realistic or not, um, playing with what the game wants you to play with as far as the foliage and the space and things like that is a bit of a challenge and I think it's kind of the fun of the game. Um, and again, it is just a game so everybody can play their own way but that's kind of how I see it and what I try to do. So the animals that are in this enclosure I will say are a little bit squished on space. Um, I put in lots of animals to get some of the cinematic shots for you guys and then they went and had babies and now they're all upset with one another. Um, so it could probably be a little bit bigger, um, but as far as the foliage, like I said, and, and all the, the other requirements that they need, they are pretty happy with that. Now the idea for this build is I wanted to do something circular, and that's really all that I uh, decided that I wanted to do circular, and um, I wanted to get more into kind of the recycled, reused kind of vibe that the Australian pack has. Um, my other build was very modern, very clean, very straight lines and angles. This one is not that. It's round, it's got those uh, corrugated metal walls that kind of remind me of shipping containers. It's still got lots of wood and things like that. Like I'm gonna make the, the roof here out of this Australian panel. One of my absolute favorite pieces that came with the game. I absolutely love these planks of wood. Um, but kind of making it uneven and, and like a little bit more outbacky styled. Now it, it's not outbacky uh, to the degree of, you know, as far as it, as much as it could be, but you know, kind of more of that feel. I hope you guys kind of understand what I'm talking about and, and uh, you'll certainly be able to see from the build. But making something circular um, is what I wanted to do because it kind of goes opposite with the koala habitat that's just on the other side where, like I said, that one was very angular, very triangular, um, very time consuming. This one didn't take me nearly as long um, because it was lots of duplication like you can see me doing here. On the inside, originally, I wanted to make it a little food court or like a, a sitting area, but I, I spaced out when I was laying down the paths and didn't, I forgot rather, that you have to put the facilities on the side of the paths. I was thinking like, oh, I'll just put the circle here and then I'll place down a, you know, chief beef or something on top of it. 
And I don't know why, because I know that's not how the game works. <laughs> I've played the game enough to know that that's not how it works. Um, but that's what I was thinking when I first did this, and um, so then I, I had to kind of redo my plan and just make it kind of a sitting area where maybe, you know, people brought their own lunch or snack or whatever it is, just kind of a shaded place to sit. I put a couple signs in there as well as some um, wall foliage planters, whatever you want to call them, um, just for some, you know, aesthetic in there. But other than that, you know, it's just kind of a, a sitting area. It didn't really come to, um, the, my idea didn't really come true as far as that goes, just because I forgot that that's how the paths work. Um, the one big thing that I did do in this build is for whatever crazy reason, I decided to do a custom floor that's made of like a kajillion pieces and took me forever. So I did cut that out because it was extremely repetitive. I made it out of individual little planks, very happy with how it came out. And the inspiration for that actually was the big wooden Australia sign that we got, the one that looks like the actual continent. I loved all the the different wood colors and things like that, it's, and in addition to um, the sign, but like these wooden panels that are using for the deck right here, not the railing, but the actual deck, um, liked all the mismatchy wood, and so I wanted to kind of keep going with that, but I didn't want it to be kind of the bluey gray color in there, I wanted it to be more of a red tone that matched the walls, like the corrugated metal pieces. So overall happy with how it turned out. It just was extremely time consuming. Here you can see me kind of messing with the, um, uh, what's this called? The deck a little bit. And I do end up changing it a bit from this. I, I actually cut out quite a bit here because I played with different pieces of like fabric shades. I played with the corrugated metal roof pieces. Um, I played with a couple other things and just couldn't get it to look right. And I ended up just making it an extension of these planks. Um, Cause like I said, my favorite pieces or one of my favorite pieces from the Australia pack, very, very happy with these. Um, and I think it looks okay. I was worried looking straight down on it that it looked way too repetitive because it's the same material as the roof. But then, you know, I, I stared at it, I looked at it, I thought about it. And then, you know, how often are you really staring straight down at a building? Um, so the more I looked at it down from more of the guest view, the more I decided that it looked you know, it looked okay. It looked how I wanted it to look. And then the other change that I do um, right now that I'm doing is switching out these poles. Um, I actually saw a stream from uh, Jaunty on Geekism and he used the Australian pieces just like this as far as um, supports for a roof structure. And I thought it looked pretty cool. So I decided to bring in those um, kind of patterned painted uh, poles, whatever you want to call them and support them rather with concrete, but with the other wooden uh, support beam type pieces that we have. Um, and so I do continue that over on the other side as well. Um, and then really overall, this is gonna be a little bit shorter of a voiceover, I apologize guys. I'm doing this in between classes. Um, and so I actually have another like Zoom meeting to log on to in just a few minutes. Um, but I actually lost track of what day it was. I was sitting here thinking it was like Tuesday or Wednesday and I have a couple more days to get a video out for you guys. And I was walking down the hall in my house and realized, oh my gosh, it's halfway through Thursday and I promise you guys videos on Friday morning. So I had to very very quickly squeeze this in so that I can get something out um, for you. And with that being said, I actually am in the grand scheme of things way ahead. I have two other buildings done, two other, three other, no, just two other, two other and one started. Whatever the case may be, I'm actually ahead and I have a few things planned already. Um, I'm getting very excited for fall. And if you follow me on any of my um, socials, you may have seen a little quick picture of a llama enclosure that I'm pretty excited about, um, but that's going to be coming out actually next week. So this will be out Friday morning. And the one that you will see a week from today will be our llamas. Um, and then after that, going back to this zoo, um, because like I said, I did decide to make it a project. So I gave it an entrance uh, area and I attempted a parking lot for the first time. So you'll get to see that in two weeks from today. 
So all good things, all, um, all wonderful, all excited for lots and lots of stuff to do still though, like River Rock Zoo, I haven't given up, I, I promise, I'm not leaving it behind. Um, we've got to finish the inside of the polar bear habitat. Um, I'm going to add snow leopards and implied habitat and then detail it all out and kind of finish it up as a zoo as far as putting a gate around the outside and kind of, you know, tying a bow on that so that we can wrap it up. And and then I do have something half done for Sakura as well. So I know I've kind of got a lot of um, a lot of different things going on right now, but it's mostly because I get bored building in the same style or the same project for too long. So I do kind of bounce back and forth between a bunch of things. However, I will in the next couple weeks try to kind of wrap everything up and bring us all back to uh, uh, like a central point, I guess, so that I don't have a thousand things going on and you're not waiting three or four weeks per um, for each individual um, series. So with that, like I said, that's a little bit of the custom floor. I'm just going to finish off some detailing here. And I actually forgot to mention that I did build this for Palsley's community contest. Um, so that's what this was originally built for. I did, however, add some extra things like I went back and redetailed the front uh, area. You'll see that in the cinematics. I really wanted to do a live walkthrough for you guys this time in, in this build, but I'm not going to have a chance, so I apologize for that. But you'll be able to see that in the cinematics at the end, as always. Again, guys, if you do enjoy, please like and subscribe if you're able to. It really helps me grow the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.
Thank you.